Okay, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. The Wayne in Spain falls mainly on the plains. Trying to get the camera a little better. Whoa. Testing, one, two, three. Oh, you know what? I have to put in the chat in the webinar. Hang on, I can do that. I think I can. So welcome, everybody. I hope you're happy. I hope you're safe. I hope everything's okay. I hope your family's all right. I hope your friends are all right. I hope your lo other loved ones are all right. So welcome to FX Street. I'd like to first start off by thanking our moderator today. We have the world's greatest moderator, so thank you. Thank you for moderating and tolerating. Thank you to everyone that has come in today. This is Trade Non-Farm Payrolls Live, the 169th month in our row that I have done this webinar. Hey, that's a trend. If you're adding that up, that's over 14 years of doing this webinar. So I'm super excited. I'm glad to be here. I hope you are too. Thank you, FX Street, for being wonderful hosts. So where are you guys from? Where are you logging in from? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So I can get my hair cut at a barber. I can get that tattoo around my belly button I've always wanted. And I can go get a massage. Those are the first things to open. <laughs> How are you? Where are you from? Talk to me, Goose. Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. Lots of Nigerians. There's a lot of Nigerians in uh, Atlanta. Big Nigerian community here. Malaysia, Iran, Perth, Australia, Bangkok, New Lebanon, Ohio. Ohio! To all my Japanese brothers and sisters. Means good morning. Could, waiting in Qatar, still waiting to get a haircut. <laughs> Dubai. Oh, I miss Dubai. Haven't been to Dubai in a few years now. Tan Tanzania. Taiwan. I'd love to visit Taiwan. I don't know anything about Tanzania. I think that might be a fun place to visit, maybe. A Sweden, Bangkok. I think that's a song, isn't it, David? I'm a Swede in Bangkok. Whoa, I'm a Swede. Yeah. Denmark. I like to party with De uh, Den <laughs> for people from Denmark. <laughs> Those Nordic countries. <clears throat> when I was in college, I somehow ended up in a toga and wearing bull horns on my head, hanging out with people from Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure we all have that same story. <laughs> so very cool. One of my favorite memories of Denmark is actually in Sweden. Uh, I was uh, hanging out with the royal family of Sweden. True story. But anyways, uh, they were explaining that in the uh, gold room, um, it's a small room uh, with giant arch ceilings and, and motifs out of pure cut pieces of gold. And they had this giant picture of the king of uh, Sweden up on his mighty steed that was, you know, up like this. And he's got the sword. He's ready to cut off the head of this dr evil dragon. And, and, of course, that's Denmark. <laughs> and I'm like, Denmark? Uh, okay. <laughs> So anyways, from Lagos. Yeah, party, big party in Lagos. Cool, right. Thank you everyone for being here. My name is Wayne McDonnell. I was actually born and raised in Kenyatta. I'm a Canadian. I'm a legal Canadian. I'm a Canadian in here. So anyways, good to, good to have you here. Weather's finally nice in Georgia, so I'm getting out of my winter funk, so that's all good. So... 
Oh, I got a PowerPoint somewhere. Uh, today we got non-fire payrolls live. Anybody think it's going to be good? Does anyone think it's going to be good? Where'd my PowerPoint go? Wait, no, 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 that's the wrong one. Uh, where's the other one? Man, I got everything in the way. Son of a... Hang on, I'm in the middle of finals week. Now, there we go. All right, now I think I bombed out the PowerPoint. No, where is it? Okay, now it's over here. Let me close that. I want to keep that open. All right, cool. So we got this. Just got to make sure we got the uh, that up. That's required by law. Oh, I see. Uh, all right, that'll work. That'll do. Pick. All right, so, okay, we're good to go. So, anyways, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money cannot afford to lose. Okay, so let's talk about it. I said, does anyone think it's going to be good? Very bad, I think. Very bad, very bad. We already know that. How do we know that? How do we already know that? This little thing called weekly jobless claims. So you don't have to be a rocket surgeon to know this is going to come out 20 million, 22 million. The worst ever seen. Okay. Well, we have to be ahead of that. We already know that. We already expect that. That's already been priced in. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about the real world. I keep hearing things like, this is the worst Great Depression, right? Where people were literally starving to death. There were literally people living 14 people to an apartment in New York City. There was food, uh, uh, you know, lineups for food that would go around city blocks. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Is this a depression? Is this a recession? Look, the economic data is bad. Yeah, it's unprecedented, right? However, this is sort of a different scenario. And I think the media loves to hype it up. But this may be, just maybe, just hear me out. This may be a different scenario than the entire economy collapsing because the economy doesn't work. But we have a functioning bond market. We have a functioning stock market. We have a functioning banking system. We have a supportive government. We have a supportive central bank. And this is due to a virus. So, okay, the number's going to come out bad. I gotcha. Okay. Now, in six months, between now and six months, do you think, Let's say the waitress at Applebee's that lost her job. Do you think she'll get her job back? What are your thoughts on that in the next six months? That means restaurants are going to have to open again. People are going to need to go back to the restaurant and order food, obviously. Yeah, we'll get to average hourly earnings. Uh, can you ask me that a little bit, uh, like in a few minutes, Alex? You're just a little bit early on that one, but let me get to that because that's a very important point. Okay. If your answer is yes, then as a currency trader, I hope you're listening to me now. Because an economist is looking backwards. An economist is like, did you see PPI? Did you see ISM? Oy vey. But we already know that. Okay, we get it. Okay. Millions and millions of people lost their jobs temporarily. Okay, I get that. So the question that we need to play as or pose as currency traders is when do we start to enter a recovery phase? 
when will restaurants open? Now, um, I, are they open here in Georgia? They might actually be open here in Georgia. I, I, I don't know. Um, but anyways, at what point will people go back to restaurants? And do you think the manager of the local Applebee's will hire the same people back to the restaurant? So this is going to be your opinion. My opinion to all this is yes. In fact, I think people are waiting to go like they're going to be they're going to be wonderfully excited about going back to their favorite restaurant to get their favorite meal and supporting that favorite restaurant of theirs because they love it. They want it to be around. And that restaurant's going to need staff. And why would you you know, recruit new staff. Why wouldn't you just hire your old staff? Okay. There may not, you know, you might have to hire some new people because other people left, but generally speaking, uh, you're going to try to go back to what you were doing before. As a trader, you need to watch for this information because that <clears throat> we need to be trading at least three months in advance, mostly six months in advance. So if you're scratching your head like, why is the stock market rallying? April was the best month trading the stock market since 1987. And you're scratching your head. You're like, but why? This, these numbers are horrible. We're going to lose another 22 million people today, right? Well, actually, we lost them over time, over the last four or five weeks, but... Why is there such a difference between the economy and the market? It's not a dead cat bounce. Come on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you type that in faster and I can respond. <clears throat> Why is there such a difference? Because you're not trading today. You're trading three to six months from now. The stock market is six months from now, okay? And as a currency trader, you need to plan Monday on Thursdays or Fridays, okay? I, leave a, I, I lead a live trading group, and on Thursdays, they plan Monday. So, therefore, the trader that shows up on Monday into the foreign exchange market goes, hey, I wonder what's going on. I uh, wonder if I should do a London breakout. Uh, uh, they're doomed. They're going to get slaughtered. They're not a bull. They're not a bear. So therefore, they're a pig. And pigs will get slaughtered, especially by our group that already had a plan 48 trading hours ago, but like more than 72 hours before that dude even showed up. We got a plan. We got the high ground. We got the crossfire. We got booby traps. We got an unfair advantage over that person. Okay. So even in that case, we're thinking three or four days ahead. But then when we do fundamentals, when we do weekly swings, when we do monthly swings, we're thinking weeks in advance. And then I'm also trying to teach people about seasonality where we can make some basic assumptions about the market six months in advance. I know what I'm going to do in January, but more you're like, well, January. Okay. I know what I'm going to do the third week of November. Okay. So I'm going to have an unfair advantage. And I know what I usually do in August, but I'm not going to do this year. And I know why. I don't know if I'm right, but it's definitely called trade planning. At least I'll be ready. <clears throat> Mark's like, it's not, yeah, because anyone could do it, right? All right, cool. So we'll get to this in a little bit. I'm an alien. I'm a legal alien. All right, cool. Hi, my name is Wayne. How are you? I'm with Trader's Way. If you need a broker, please consider Trader's Way. They want you to succeed. They want to invest into your 
uh, education because they believe an educated trader has a better opportunity to become a skilled trader. And we all know skilled traders become profitable traders and profitable traders trade for years and years and years and years. And that's the kind of client that Trader's Way is trying to attract. So if you open up a demo account at Trader's Way right now, in the back office, there's a link to my daily video, uh, my daily live training. And I'll teach you technical and fundamental analysis and trader psychology. And it's faux free. Again, because they're trying to attract you to their website. They're trying to earn your loyalty and respect. They're trying to give you an education so that you can develop skills, be a, a consistent trader, be a profitable trader, be a happy trader. And they would like the opportunity to execute your trades for you on your behalf when you click the button. So they have fast execution speed, low spreads. If you'd rather have an ECN, you can have an ECN for MT4, ECN for MT5. Also, their swaps are amazing. So check it out, man. Tradersway.com. What else is going on? Oh, at FX Bootcamp, uh, because of COVID-19, the video, all the video, the entire video training course, every single video has been bundled together and has the price has been dropped by almost 80% to support Forex traders during COVID. So instead, like I, I heard today, the average household now watches eight hours more television and Netflix a week than before COVID. So instead of binge watching uh, reruns of The Walking Dead, um, maybe you can binge watch uh, Forex training videos. So maybe check that, all that out. My chart templates are available at MetaTraders, my books on Amazon. Other interesting things, you, you used to work at NASA, Apple, Cisco Systems, and uh, I'm a smarty pants with a couple of Harvard degrees. Cool. <clears throat> so anyways, 8.30 is the announcement. I wanted to bring up uh, a point that Alex had brought up about uh, weekly jobless claims. Let me get this out of the way for now. So Alex, uh, um, what were you going to bring up about uh, hourly? Is Alex still here? All right. So when this data comes out, we're going to get a couple of things. Oh, thanks for being rude, Alan. Everyone appreciates that. All right. <clears throat> what do we, what do we, when the non-firm payrolls comes out, we get how many people that are non-seasonal workers uh, have filed for unemployment claims? Or actually, in this case, just have in the survey declared they don't have a job. Okay, so we got that. And through the um, establishment survey. Yeah, no, I got you, Alex. Uh, but is there any particular reason why you care? And you probably, well, I, I think you're, I think you're on to something, but let me go, right? Okay. So we also, so we get this headline number, but through the establishment survey, we're going to see things like um, uh, number of hours worked. We're going to see uh, average hourly earnings. We're also going to get a uh, unemployment rate. So we're looking at things like, we're looking at things like, uh, okay, the unemployment rate's going to go to what? 15, 16%? Well, 16, let's say 16%. Okay. That doesn't tell us much though. That just tells us out of the workforce that has been available, 85% of people have a job. Right? 84% of people still have a job, which is actually pretty high. I don't know. I mean, it's all relative. But we also know we lost a whole bunch of Americans in 2008 that are no longer um, counted in the job market or the workforce. So whatever. Right. So that so is it really helpful to know it's 16 percent? Well, it's, you know, but I'd almost argue like, OK, it's, it's statistically relevant, but I don't know if it if we can learn anything from it, except a whole bunch of people lost their jobs because of COVID-19. But once again, we already know that. 
And I also believe a lot of those are temporary job losses and that we're going to very, very quickly. Well, I wouldn't say very quickly because, you know, in this case, I think losing jobs was like jumping off of a cliff and now you got to hike back up the mountain. Right. So I think it'll be slow and steady, but I think it'll be reasonably fast and steady recovery. Okay. But Alex brings up hourly um, earnings and there is something we can learn from that. Right. And what does it mean if there's a giant spike in average hourly earnings? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Yes, Ed, in this case, yes. So for like weekly jobless claims, it's literally people filing for unemployment insurance. So they're literally had a job and now they literally don't have a job. So yes, it's literal jobs lost. But what about average hourly earnings? What can we learn? We're assuming a giant spike in earnings. That's, is that a good thing or a bad thing? People are going to earn significantly more money per hour than before. Is this a good thing or is it a bad thing? Great. And so Alex, who brought it up, says good. I'm so glad you brought it up. And I'm so glad I'm going to speak with you about it. Okay. What does it mean? How do they do the calculation? What is the math involved? So you take the total payroll, divide by the number of jobs, divide by, you know, uh, the number of hours in a year. So by 2000. And guess what? It goes up. It's not a supply issue per se. It's not like you're paying more for a waitress at Applebee's. She doesn't have a job. So if 84% of people in the workforce still have a job and 16% now do not have a job, who lost their jobs if hourly wages go up significantly? Waitresses at Applebee's. Yeah, poor people. Who bought the stock market when you could buy Starbucks for 50%? Poor people or rich people? Rich people. Right? Who bought MGM Grand at eight bucks? A $60 stock. Who bought it at eight bucks or 10 bucks? Poor people or rich people? Who bought Delta Airlines at 20 when it's a $60 stock? Poor people or rich people? Rich people. So rich people are going to get very, very rich on this. And poor people uh, have lost their jobs and have nothing. Okay? And the interesting thing is in places like New York and New Jersey, uh, you don't even have to pay your rent now. You won't get kicked out onto the street. Um, so the waitress at least got a little bit of unemployment. She got a, a bonus from the Trump administration you know, a couple of thousand bucks and she doesn't have to pay her rent. And then by now, and let's say the end of summer, she'll probably get her job back. Okay. So I want you to look at this and say, okay, we already know the headline number is going to be big, but that's already been priced in because we've already traded all that through Thursday's weekly jobless claims. Like we already know all of this, right? And then the next thing is unemployment rates going to jump to 16%. But once again, 85% of people still have their jobs and are still working, still receiving money. And then um, when the hour, average hourly earnings jumps, if you hear from some reporter with a journalism degree saying, oh, well, at least that's a glimmer of hope. That's a glimmer of hope. Maybe that's the silver lining. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about.
Okay. So all it will indicate to us is who lost their jobs. And that'll be generally um, those that are lower skilled. So that's kind of the interesting, weird paradox, uh, you know, in this case, which is just straight out of uh, economic theory. Okay. But I want you to understand that between now and let's say July, July's non-farm payroll. So we're going to, we're meeting today. Then we're going to have a non-farm payrolls in June. And then by the time we get to non-farm payrolls in July, like July 8th or whatever it is, um, you need to be watching for a change in direction in this data. And in particular, the change in the, the technical analysis. And even um, by then, I think if you're seeing improvement in um, economic data, like the worst is over and things are slowly getting better, the markets will already be fully risk on. Okay. And again, a great example of that is uh, we've already had the best uh, month, uh, last month, April, was the best trading month since 1987. And so in March, I was saying, get ready for it, get ready for it, get ready for it. In March, I said, make a list of the top 10 stocks you would like to buy simply because they're cheap and you believe they'll be around in 25 years. In March, I said, you're not going to be able to save your way into prosperity. And by the, uh, but three weeks later, you missed it. Now, Unethical says, hey, Wayne, should we expect a weak dollar? Well, it depends on how the market interprets the number. What's the number? I don't know the number. We're all guessing, you know, what the low end is 17 million. The high end is, I don't know, probably 30. But if you just look at weekly jobless claims. So I already, I already wrote a whole article on FX Street on how to come up with, a, how to develop a model for predicting the non-farm payrolls headline number. I've already done it. You should have studied it. I did it years and years and years and years ago. I still remember doing it. I remember where I sat. I remember I had to give up time playing with my kids on a beautiful day, but I wrote that article. So should we expect strength or weakness? Well, you've already modeled it, right? You already know what the number is likely to be. And everyone else has modeled it. All the other professionals have had their quants and their PhDs do it. Great. So now it's how different is the headline number going to be from your model? And is it statistically different enough that it'll force the government or the Fed to issue a new response or a new policy? That's a tall order to ask for. The Fed's already given $4 trillion. The U.S. government is also given $2 trillion. So we already have a $6 trillion response. What more do you want? Okay. I don't think the 16% of people that lost their jobs contributed $6 trillion to GDP. So for every person that lost a $40,000 job, the government has pumped in probably a million dollars. Okay. So... This is why the stock market rallied like crazy. It's not the bad economic data that rallied the stock market. It was the $6 trillion for free. Okay, so now, once again, let's go back. You've already created your model. I've already taught you how. You've already done your research and your work. You're not lazy. Okay, and now you have this headline number that you expect based on your research. Now, the number comes out, it could be wildly different. And the reason for that is they didn't talk to every single person in the United States. They only talked to like 20,000, right? Right? They only talked to like 20 or 30,000. And from that, do some weird fuzzy logic math to pump out a headline number. And their math could be wrong. The margin of error could be ginormous. So uh, their headline number maybe is radically different than yours because you're probably a better economist, right? So, um, 
And in that case, is it enough to freak the market out? Well, yeah, of course it'll freak the market out. So you get some volatility for about, what, three hours? And then we go back to reality. Sounds like a M uh, Eminem song, isn't it? Oh, back, back to reality. Oh, it don't matter, dude. So anyways, and we go back to what we were going to do anyways. If you think it's the number is so different that the government has to pump more money and the Fed has to do more easing and more emergency stimulus, well, then that's a whole game changer. Okay. When the economy is um, contracting, when the, and more particularly, when the Fed is lowering interest rates, the dollar gets strong. When the Fed prints money, which is different than lowering interest rates. See, when the Fed lowers the interest rates, it creates a behavioral finance trade. And I did extensive training on this in my free webinars on behavioral finance. And why the dollar gets strong when the Fed is cutting interest rates. And it has to do with front running the inevitable reaction to that policy. Okay, so if you've missed that, why don't you go to tradersway.com, open up a demo account, and then the back office, click the link to my daily webinars. Faux free, because if you don't know this, you're really at a loss. Okay. Okay. So if they are printing money, which is different than cutting rates, if they're doing quantitative easing, that weakens the US dollar. It increases the amount of money. The Fed, if you think about dollar bills, it's not really dollar bills because the treasury makes dollar bills, but let's say the ones and zeros on your bank account, the Fed created four trillion more of those ones and zeros. Okay, so think about it as money sloshing around the system, every single dollar gets weaker. Okay, and then some point, if Americans start investing abroad or buying TVs from South Korea or buying laptops from China, the US dollar is gonna weaken even further. So what we're looking for is less bad is good, good is weak dollar. And then we're gonna look for like balance of trade data over the, over the series of the next three to six months. Okay, and if Americans start buying more stuff from abroad, you'll see that in the trade balance, the US dollar will get weak. Okay, so one of the things we've been watching uh, as a group is the balance of trade out of Australia. Just six to eight weeks ago, Australia was importing more than they are exporting. And that is bad. They're an exporting nation and they were importing more. So they're either importing too much or they're not exporting. Of course, they're not input, uh, importing too much. They're just not exporting. Holy smokes. So the Aussie dollar went down and down and down and down. It was a horrible end of the world. China came back online, boom, balance the trade way up. Australian has a, uh, an export surplus. And Australia dollar is recovering. So I want you to kind of think that way too. Where are we in the cycle of COVID-19 recovery? Not the actual virus, but think of yourself 90 days ahead. Will things be worse in 90 days than they are right now? Then you're a bear, you're risk off. Will things be better in 90 days than they are right now? Are they gonna be better in 90 days than they are today? If yes, you're actually risk on, even though the economic data today is horrible, but the investments or trades that you're making in the next, you know, today, tomorrow, the next day, are all gonna be about the future expectations. And even though the economic data today is bad, you're placing trades based on in 90 days or less, it will be not as bad, which is good. So we could come out with 19 million jobs lost, 20 million jobs lost, 22 million jobs lost, and it's good news. 
because we already know and the only thing we're worse is it going to be worse than that i'm telling you if this comes out 19 million it's going to be a huge relief so one other tidbit before we kind of get going do you guys want a tip who wants a forex trading tip a tip and a trick S same kind of thing to help you discern whether you should be risk on or risk off well you guys uh think about it i'll have my coffee that's how big my ego is you see the size of my head it's crazy I'm like a giant forex man now, i'm gonna put this out of the way a little bit yeah hey does traders or does uh fx street have uh super chat <laughs> and like i'll tell everyone the chips in a dollar <laughs> all right how about this use the stock market Okay, use the stock market as a leading indicator. If the stock market is going up today or even better this week, that tells you investors are already risk on. They're deploying their capital, making investments, taking on risk because they believe in the future there will be higher returns. Thank you, K-Bro. So if the stock market's going up, thumbs up. Risk on, let's go. Deploy the capital, right? Like a catapult of cash. The stock market's coming down. Ooh, things are bad. Because the vast majority, vast, vast majority of stock market participants make money when it goes up and lose money when it goes down. So if it goes up, Every, most people, 90%, 95% of people are a winner. Okay? So that's a good... The only way for it to go up is if people are d taking on risk. And that, therefore, there you go, the risk on. So, if the stock market goes up... So that's the trick. Here's the tip. If the stock market goes up today, and really, ideally, all next week, the dollar will be weak. The U.S. dollar will be weak. The Japanese yen will be weak if the Nikkei is also going up. Okay? And if the European stock market's going up, the Swiss franc will be weak. So Bash is saying, so we already know the data is going to be bad. Does this mean the USD is going to be strong? Risk off. No. No. Uh, you, I guess you just missed the last 20 minutes of my conversation. <laughs> right? But uh, no. No, it does not mean. It means that if we already knew, then we already knew. And we have already adjusted. So it's already done. Adjusted, done, and dusted. Okay. All right, what currency, what currency pair should we watch when non-farm payrolls is released? Please put in a vote. Pound dollar, euro dollar, USD CAD, USD, euro USD, euro USD, USD yen, Aussie yen, US CAD, euro USD, US CAD, US CAD, lots of US CADs, euro USD, euro USD. Guten Morgen, unorthodox. Euro USD, USD CAD. Well, wow, lots of USD CADs and Euro USDs. And now the pounds are coming out. All right, so I'll tell you what. Let's do it this way. Lots of dollar requests. So let's scan, do a dollar scan. 
Okay. Thank you, by the way, for contributing and interacting with me. Okay. Uh, sing, sing dollar, because no, uh, uh, nothing that we, oh, okay. This one I'll leave. Let's change this one. Although this is basically pound dollar anyways. Um, pound dollar. I don't really care about that one, but we'll leave it. In Canada, and then of course we gotta throw down a euro. Euro! Have I ever told you you're my euro? All right. <clears throat> Number one, born without a gun. I wasn't licensed to have one. There you go. The minute you see me, fear me. I am the epitome. A public enemy used, abused without clues. I refuse to blow a fuse. They even have me on the news. All right. So there's a process here. If you don't know if you're a bull or a bear, you're already broke intellectually. And you will end up being broke financially. So if you don't know if you're a bull or a bear, don't trade. Done. I hope you understand. If you don't know what is about to happen, you are about to lose money. Cool. If you're a bull or you're a bear, then let's create some trade plans because you know the market is likely to do whatever it's been doing and you already have an opinion on what it's doing, right? So I think if this comes out 20 million, I think we already get that. We already know that. It's already sort of done and, uh, and integrated into our trade trades. So I think if you trade sort of in this area, you're going to lose money. Okay, so here's what I'd rather you do. If you're a bull, you only buy low. So you'll need NFP to dip you. If you're a bear, you only sell high. And really the best one is way up here. Oops, that was supposed to be pink. Okay, the best would be up here for a bear. So how about this? Let's put this together. Let's say this thing pops like crazy, huge NFP, and you, but you're a bear. You're going to sell down, uh, take it down from this point, okay? If you're a bull, you really kind of want to dip, but it may not happen this way, right? This Often it does this. Well, as you approach 110 and you're a bear, let them, let them have it and take the counter trend. So in the research I published on FX Street like seven years ago, I said there's a there's a vol trade and two, there's a counter trend trade. Okay, so the vol trade will go ah, and the counter trend will go oh, and we'll probably be here on Monday and we're like, huh, wasn't that funny? Nothing happened. Okay. So, have you made a decision yet on risk on or risk off? If you're risk on, dollar weakens and this goes up. And by risk on, you're saying the worst is over and even though things are bad, they're going to get better. Money will be deployed because money is being deployed not based on today, but 90 days to 180 days in the future. Okay, so you're like, I've seen the future. Okay, and you're going to trade the future. Now, if you don't like that and you're a bear, you're like, this is enough. And that's that's where you're going to look to do your counter trend. Okay, now, what if the opposite happens? The number is really bad. It comes out 23 million jobs lost. Okay, you're going to have to watch this area for show. Okay, okay, because bears should be worried about support. Okay, and this is huge support, huge. So I think you might get like, uh, and then you, you could stabilize. And what we don't know is if there's a, a second uh, counterattack. So let's take a look at the, the next low. And this is over at 107-ish. Uh, so really, um, you could get, let's say this, then you got to protect yourself, maybe take a profit, 
And if you're a bear, you're going to sell this and take it down to 107. And when you hit 107, get out. Can you see that? Because what's going to happen next is going to really rock your world. And it's going to go like this. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you don't have the patience and discipline to carry out a strategy, that's also leading to your economic downfall. Okay. So the numbers are horrible. They're terrible. You're probably going to get something like, uh, uh, uh. Okay. If they're not so bad, let's say the headline is terrible. I think what will happen is it will come down and then do this. Okay. And then the next one is it never comes down. It just kind of the vol takes it straight up. And then you're probably going to get this in the future, either there or a little bit higher. Okay. Do you understand? What about it? I've already explained the stock market scenario. So you might want to rewind. Okay. I've already explained the, the stock market is a leading indicator. It was like 10 minutes ago. So there's that. We had quite a few people ask for USD Kitty Cat. Okay, what's the trend, up or down? I'm not going to do crosses pre uh, Forex or pre uh, NFP because that's microeconomics and I focus my trading strategies on macroeconomics. So I'm not gonna isolate based on micro. But you, if, you, if you already specialize in one particular currency pair, then all you have to do is, or I mean one particular currency, then all you have to do is decide risk on or risk off and which funding currency to trade and which other ones would go with them. All right, so based on how you trade a, tra a, a range, it's pretty simple. We're either going to do this, or we're going to drop down and do this. Okay. And of course, maybe a third potential, if the news is actually very, uh, uh, very, very bad, you'll probably get like maybe a pop this way. Okay, and we'll play it off of this. Okay, neutral, bearish, oh no, so neutral, bullish, bearish. And the reason um, up is bearish is because it's dollar, right? Okay. And of course, dollar strong signals macroeconomic contraction. Nothing actually unorthodox. So that's one of the things I've been trying to explain for the 14 years I've been doing this webinar. It's not the headline number that moves the market. So what is the headline number that moves the market? Why is it that 20 million people are likely to have reported having lost their job in a month? 
And why is it not a big deal to us as currency traders? It's a big deal if you're an economist looking backwards, but we're a forecaster. So why is it? What What is important then? By the way, I've already explained it today. So you guys should be able to answer without too much difficulty. It's not the price. No, that's not the point. Global macro econ sorta. Thank you, Avi. I'm going for a millennial douchebag, I think is what it said in the title for this look. Money crossing borders, yeah, but it's like, why? Why? I explained it already this morning. Market sentiment, no, but why? What creates market sentiment? Market sentiment for what? Policy from where? By the way, Darren, it's not COT reports because COT reports told, have told you what people have already done. Therefore, it's almost irrelevant. It's the change in COT reports. It's the Fed's response. Everything, listen to me, everything we do as currency traders comes down to the central bank policy and in particular, their change in policy, and not the one they're making today, the one they'll make in the future. Okay? If the Fed cut interest rates at a meeting, we already knew they were going to cut. Of course we knew. They have even told us they were going to cut. So what do we care about when the Fed cuts interest rates? Is the Fed going to cut interest rates in the next meeting? What is the likelihood they're going to cut in the next meeting and the meeting after? It's never what just happened. It's always what's three months out, guys. Okay? So if the headline number is horrible, we already know. We've already hedged the stock markets because you got out because things are bad. But people already got out of the stock market and got back into the stock market, right? So, so like, what if the number is so horrible, it's 30 million people, which is not likely because you should have a model. I've already taught you how to do a model. So the model's going to spit out, nah, it's going to come out 22 million. Great, but we already know that. If it comes out worse than that somehow, some way, some weird way, because the the... the the government did such poor math, then what will happen is it might force the Fed or the government to do more. But they've already pumped in $6 trillion. How much more do you need? Okay? So therefore, no matter what happens today, there's probably a 90% chance it's already done. We already did it. You should have been on this trade two weeks ago okay so we'll have some sort of volatility and then we'll go back doing what we were doing before okay remember it's all about central banking policy they control the money supply and the money supply controls the value of the currency No, I don't know about that, uh, Quant. Uh, quants typically have PhDs. I'll, I, I don't have Thank that. You. Stand by that commitment. We're here. Where's Alex Steele? Come on, Alex. We're just about a few minutes away from the all-important jobs of
support for April. The numbers will be trickling out. We want to get a quick market check because it's still the buy every Remember, day. hourly hour for Jerlins, unemployment rate, and the, and the headline you're number. Still higher. You're still seeing money flow into the bond market. You have a two-year yield uh, now up by about, uh, down by about two basis points. And the 10-year, you're down by about two basis points uh, as well. You hit 11 basis points uh, on the two-year, sort of right around uh, those record uh, lows. So the data is out. Um, the takeaway, not as bad as originally expected. Uh, we lost about 20 uh, million people, or 20 million jobs uh, in the month of April. 20 million jobs in the month of April. The expectation, though, uh, was for 22 uh, million jobs. Okay, uh, so that's dollar weakness. Getting hit down 1.3 uh, million, but not as bad uh, as estimated. The overall change in payrolls also coming in. Uh, Net down 19 a million people as well. Uh, Bloomberg's Michael McKee, economic and policy correspondent, uh, joining me now. Yeah, you got the unemployment. So that should be dollar weakness, yo. To almost 23 percent. Uh, I can't even fathom that kind of jump as the labor force participation rate uh, comes down too. Mike, what's your initial blush here on these numbers? Well, my initial guess is that there's uh, probably some data collection problems, as we talked about at 7:30, and also that uh, we have to keep in mind that this survey only includes the week of the 12th of April. So it doesn't That's capture right. the entire month. And as we saw throughout the month, more and more people were laid off by the jobless claims numbers. So we're going to probably, uh, the biggest takeaway from the initial headline here, and I'm waiting for them to post the uh, overall details, uh, the initial takeaway is that uh, we're going to see a very bad May payroll report as well. I should point out a uh, distinction, sorry, the 22.8% uh, was the underemployment rate. The unemployment rate uh, rose to about 14.7%. So everything is not as bad, guys. By the huge jump in average hourly earnings. Ah, I cut her off. Shoot. I forgot to look at that. All right, so we already know about that. All right, so everything's not as bad. This is very good news. Dollar should weaken. So we have CAD dollar coming down. Very nice. We got Aussie dollar going up. Very nice. Okay. Cool. So here's the actual non-farm payrolls. That's bad is good. But you still got to pay attention to your lines. Pick your lines. Okay, this is a this is a buy zone. My internet's unstable. Is it really? Yeah, I guess with streaming and stuff. Yeah, that's terrible. I haven't rebooted my router. I have new hardware, though. I have new hardware. I bought a Wi-Fi 6 router, uh, the Nighthawk, I think it's called. Oh, the stream went down. I didn't get a warning about that. Uh, anyways, I, just, I was taking you through the actual non-farm payrolls report. Okay, so I was saying that these are good. Mark your lines. Less bad is a good, good news. Well, well, Garrett uh, or Alex says uh, volatility is really low. Yeah, but we already knew all of this, so why would volatility be high? Okay, so all I was saying is pick your lines and. Get, go back to doing what you were doing before. So if you were a bear, this is a monthly M3. As a bear, that's a sell zone. Sell, 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 sell. Okay. And if you're a bull, 
what you're looking at is the roll reversals, right? And then I got the midpoint just to kind of keep a tab on that. Okay. You understand? What was your plan yesterday if you were a bull? Well, let's try to figure this out. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 up. So what was your plan yesterday when you were here? Down, down, buy. So you might want to keep your eyes on that. Right? And if you're a bear, you're like, no, no, no. Uh, a bear might like something like a breach, a pullback, and a sell. Okay? So if you're a bear... Your trade is probably here on Monday. Okay. If you're a bull, you should have bought it uh, about eight seconds ago. Adam, I've already discussed that in great detail before the news. It has to do with the people that lost jobs. 16% of people lost their jobs, Adam. And the other 84 did not lose their jobs. So the people that kept their jobs earn a lot more money than those who lost their jobs. So poor people lost their jobs. Not poor people keep their jobs. So if you have a college degree and, uh, 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 and you work for a big corporation, maybe in the Silicon Valley, and you do project management or you're a product manager, or you're a, a computer programmer, if you're in finance, if you're in management, you kept your job. Okay. If you're a waitress at Applebee's, you lost your job. And that's what that giant spike in average hourly earnings was. But that's not a good, okay, that's not a good thing. Okay. So if you don't understand some of these concepts, you should take the fundamentals training trading course at FX Bootcamp. And I think on Tuesday, on Tuesday, I am removing the 80% discount. I think it's actually 76.4. So last month when we met in April, I told you I bundled all my training videos. 35 hours, but it's actually closer to 50 hours worth of Forex training videos, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, uh, central banking, um, price action, scalping, spot swing, day trading, um, trade planning, technical analysis. It's, it's all in there at 76.4%. That deal is ending on Tuesday. So if you're interested in learning more about central banking, that's in the fundamentals course, which is in part of that bundle at FX Bootcamp. So basically, this is your last time to sign up and receive 80% discount. Okay, so buyers, sellers, pigs are in the middle. The reason I have this here is it has to do with the scalping methodology of a high volatility event driven strategy. And, you know, we need to look for um, a counterattack.
Right on, Kevin. Welcome to the family. Take care, Alex Alejandro. So that's why I got this here, guys. This is uh, the follow-up. Now let's take a look at trading. Uh, okay, let's do some analysis here. We have to look at probabilities. So uh, one, two, three, four, five days ago, we printed a low. Okay. Five days ago, we printed a low. And let me get this a little lower, uh, a little thinner. Then the next day, we have, right, uh, another higher low. And then we retest, but still no lower low. And then another up. Okay. So we've had five days with no lower low. We have a bullish engulfing candle with hardly a wick at all, and then just the slightest of pullbacks, and then up again. Do you consider that bearish or bullish? Yeah, Mr. Cheeks, but what else would you expect in a scenario like this? Right. So the issue is, if this continues up, we'll, we'll get a higher high, higher low, higher high scenario. And the target for May 6900. Okay. And we're still at, we're just breaching 65. So there's still 400 more pips in this. And it'll look like this over time. Up, 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 down, down, buy. 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 Up, 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 out. Take profit. Okay. So all we did in the last three weeks is up, up, down, up, up. So the near future is going to look like down. So you'll be buying... On Monday or Tuesday, you'll be buying a dip back to the $65 price, and then you'll take it north. So I already know what I'm going to do Tuesday on this. Max, the Fed is buying 10s and 30s right now. They're steepening the yield curve. Thank you, Maxie. Okay. Now, if we're wrong, that news had to be bad enough to reverse what we already knew. What do you guys think the likely of that is? That 20 million was so unexpected, it's going to change everything because we didn't have it priced in here or here or here. Does anyone think that's true? That the market just had no idea. How many people here think the market had no idea that was coming? That Epic Street wasn't talking about it. Bloomberg wasn't talking about it. CNBC wasn't talking about it. Barron's wasn't talking about it. Nobody was talking about 20 million drops. Dude, everybody on the dang planet knew it was coming out of 20. So they knew it. It was happening here. So now you think they're going to panic? I mean, this is an opinion. This is your opinion. You're like, oh, nobody saw this coming. This is just random. Oh, my God. This is so shocking. Holy moly. Forget it then. Give me my money back. I got to hide in a cave. Uh, no, I think everybody knew. So I think this is what's going up. I think this is, what, I think this is what's happening. Uh, 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 uh. uh. 
get out, get out. So um, up for a couple of days, down for a day, up for three or four days, down for a couple of days, up for three or four or five days, and out. And that's how May's going to go, and May's going to end like that. Because we got to get ready for the June Fed meeting. Yeah, boy, the June Fed meeting. And then what happens after June Fed meeting? Summer. So I'm in finals week. I have two major papers to write. I have, I think, three reflections to write and one final examination to prepare for by Monday. And then my last semester, my last formal semester in my four-year program is over. And I got to do summer school one more time, but I get to do it from the comfort of my house, not from a dorm. And I'm doing a class on venture capital, and I'm doing another class on um, uh, commercial real estate financing. So like issuing bonds into the bond market to raise money for uh, projects or uh, developing REITs and, you know. So anyways, it's the capital market structuring of the real estate industry. And then uh, I will be done my master's degree in financial management. And then I just drop the mic. Right on, Davey. Welcome to the team, buddy. I, I toast you. Welcome to the team. Oh, that's some good coffee. Problem is I've had nine cups of coffee today. So my wife says I should cut back. So I told her, well, starting now, I'm only going to have one cup a day. Mm. So cheers to you. Luckily, I know magic. Yeah, actually, I like Cuban coffee. Um, I used to buy uh, Monte Cristo coffee. I really enjoyed it. And then I started buying um, Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. So I really enjoy that as well. Right on, silence. I'm overdue for a, another trip back down. All right, so what you want to do? What was the plan? Not as bad as it could be, right? So you guys remember? So in the short term, we got this going on. And then it's got to come down maybe breach this, then rise, and then back down. Okay, you guys remember that from a whole hour ago? fxbootcamp.com Yeah. Wait, Cubans don't trust Colombians, do they? I didn't think a Cuban could drink Colombian coffee. Sosa! <laughs> so anyway, so taking a look at this. This is kind of what we talked about. Cool. Yeah, I can't wait to meet up Florida with Maida, a cup of coffee, and 
hanging out in a cafe somewhere, smoking a nice cigar. That's going to be a good day. Okay. Yeah, I guess we should look around the world and see how other markets are responding to this good news. 20, 20 million people lost their jobs in April. Fantastic news. Let's see how we're, everyone else is dealing with it. So stabilization in the kitty cat. Oops, I just did that. We got some ups. We got some ups on the beast. Yeah, Q Q Colombians have good coffee. <laughs> so I'm just joking. Okay, let's see. How does this one work? Double bottom. Help me, Wayne. Help me. Okay. Help me, Wayne. Help me. Okay. Double bottom. Up, 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 up. Down, down. Buy. Up, 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 up. Down, down. Buy. Okay. Up, 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 up. Down, down. Buy. Up, 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 up. Down, down. Buy. And now, so you've missed the buy, of course. So in the future, you need a down, down, buy. So if you did something now, you're way too late, my friend. Way too late. Where were you yesterday? Observer, you missed the first hour of my presentation then. You're going to have to go back and rewind. I, I've explained it now to the point where I'm blue in my face. So if it's a shock to you, well, at least there's an opportunity to learn because I've already talked about it. Okay. So either wa watch the recording. I, I don't know how Epic Street has their YouTube settings, but you could, if the set, pro uh, it, it may be set so that you can actually rewind right now. Okay. So anyways, can you guys see? Now, what else do you notice about this? You see? What do you see that is similar in these situ in these scenarios? You see something similar? What do you notice? They're right at market opens. Okay, this is London open straight down, New York open straight down. Okay, London open straight up, New York straight up, New York straight up. Not only can you predict where price is going, but you can also predict when it's going to go. Time of day. David Pegler, when he worked for FX Bootcamp, always used to say, Todd. Did you, David Pegler just had a, a webinar, didn't he? Just like yesterday or something up at FX Street. He was a member of FX Bootcamp for probably two years, and then I hired him as a coach because he's such a, a hard worker. His work ethic is amazing, he, and he's like one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And so he was a coach, I think, for five years. And he, you know, so he was the one, he would call it Todd, time of day. And so you even know when to trade, where to trade, and why to trade if you have skills. If you don't got the skills, it's going to be a tough game, son. Okay? Isn't that neat? You even know when to be at the charts and when not to trade.
So like someone that just trade after non-farm payrolls, let's say they just entered because of the new scalp. What's likely to happen? Okay, they got some up. Oops, let's do that one in blue. They got some up. Great, great, great. I said it would hit resistance to come back. And then what? Now you need this whole down, down, down process, right? So it'll do this. And what percentage of traders that entered here are, are going to get knocked out with nothing? What percentage do you think? And P says Euro dollars going up. Yeah, that's why you should have bought it uh, four or five hours ago. So it's not that it's going up that matters. It's that you bought low that matters. Okay, guys? Look, when you got an uptrend, any idiot can figure it out that there's an uptrend or a downtrend. Okay? I mean, it's a little harder than that. But it's not, it's not the trick. I mean, you should already know that based on your biases and all that. The issue is buying low. You buy red candles as a bull, not green candles. So you might be right on direction, but if you paid too much for it, the very first pullback is going to knock you out. But we know it's definitional. If you're a, a bull, you expect up, 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 down, down. So you buy a higher low. Then you expect a higher high. Then you expect a higher low. Then you expect a higher high. Then you expect a higher low. Then you expect a higher high. Then you expect a higher low. Then you expect a higher high and buy it overpriced. Like what the hell? Who buys it up there? Four and a half hours late. No, you buy the next dip, brother. Okay. You buy low as a bull, not high. So you got some extra, you got some extra oomph here because of the news. But you should already be in it down here. Why would you need a market maker in Forex? That almost doesn't make any sense. It's the most liquid market in the world. You're, it's actually cash. So a market maker is like, well, we need. I want to buy some Apple, and so, but no one will sell it to me. So you know, the market maker does it, or, or whatnot. Or you want to sell some Apple, but you don't want to, you know, whatever. So the market maker will take it, but. With, cash it's a lot less necessary can you explain when you expect the trend to change never it's never going to change The Fed and the government put $6 trillion to prop up the stock market. It's going up. It's never going to change. Well, I, I just don't understand what they would be doing. I want to buy some Great British Pound, but I don't want the market to know about it. Like, what? I don't understand. Or, I want to sell my pound, but I can't find anybody. It's so illiquid. I mean, there's probably a market maker if you're doing a very illiquid currency. I get that, but that doesn't exist here, so it would make no sense for you to make the comment. So uh, it's a little perplexing, the comment is all I'm saying. Okay. So think about it this way, guys. We just learned that 20 million people lost their job. And that was good news. So what do we need for bad news? Okay. What, what kind of news do we need to see to have something worse than 20 million people losing their jobs in a month 
million a million people a day. Uh, Mr. Cheeks, irrelevant. What is relevant to what Trump says has to do with a, uh, renewing a trade war with China? That would do it. If we go back into a trade war, we're back into risk off. The f Trump captioning the headlines of the day about, oh, he's going to make a quick recovery. He can't do that. So it's just... It's just politics. It's irrelevant to cash flow. So all we care about is cash flow, guys. Is the Fed adding to the uh, M1, M2? Right? That's one big thing. Is the Fed making money cheap or expensive to borrow? Where are we in the business cycle, for example? And will anything negative impact current market conditions? Well, going back into a trade war does not create more economic uh, activity. It creates less. So that would be it. That would be the bad news. And therefore, you would probably buy some yen and sell some Aussie. Kev says, why did NFP News drop Aussie on the one minute? Well, first of all, it was one minute, maybe uh, belched, right? More, more likely, some people took profit and some people sold. For someone to react to a one minute candle on a news release, clearly they don't understand anything about economics. They're looking for a quick scalp. And it's so funny because the risk reward ratio is so unfavorable. It's just stupid. So like someone trying to convince you to make a living trading that way um, is selling you snake oil. Mike, I don't know any other way to say it. They're like, look, I fly in a private jet. Look, I drive a Lamborghini. You could do all of this on your MT4 platform on your phone. Look, I trade a three-minute chart. Boom, I just made $10,000 in the last three minutes. You should do this too. You could also have a yellow Lamborghini. Girls that are better looking than you will finally start laughing at all your jokes. All because I know how to trade on my phone and make millions of dollars and drive fly in my jet plane. Seriously, you honestly believe that. That's the truth you believe in. Not much I can help with. Sorry. If that if you believe that's true, nothing I can do to help you. If you believe the secret to financial independence is getting rich quick, you just have no concept of reality. You're probably desperate. And there's not much I can do for you in that situation because you're not thinking rationally. No one has ever become successful without trying hard. It's just like it's never happened. Now, maybe you win the lottery, whatever. That's not getting successful. You won the lottery? Oh, you're lucky. But I wouldn't call you successful. But yeah, right on, Max. I, what, all I said, Max, is I don't understand why you'd need a market maker in Forex. Right. I just don't understand. Like maybe you're you, you're trying to sell a whole bunch of Polish Zloty and you can't find a counterparty. But even then, the Polish Zloty would have plenty of liquidity, even if you were trying to do a B on it. So maybe if you're doing a, an obscure, tiny little country that no one's ever heard of. And you're trying to move for some reason a billion US dollars of this currency? Like, why would you have a billion dollars worth of that currency? 
And but anyways, you own a billion dollar U.S. dollars worth of that currency, which probably makes a trillions of whatever. And now you're you're trying to sell it, but you don't have a counterparty. So therefore, your your Goldman Sachs is going to act as a market maker for you. Like it just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. But like I said, that's my point of view. I don't understand the need for that. Right. Uh, the best internet source for the business cycle. I, I, I don't know. I don't see, I, that's not how I do my work, guys. So um, the way you look at it is, you know, like, for example, you look at potential GDP. GDP, uh, GDP, okay? And it's GDP star, so that's potential GDP. And then you look at the cycle of, of GDP, for example. Okay. And you start then because the Fed, for example, talks about this all the time. You can pull up their data and you can find out like we're down here now suddenly and we got to move uh, potential GDP back up, right? Actual GDP back up to potential GDP. Um, and there, and typically this overlaps um, large business cycles. So it's not just one business cycle in one year. Right, which I call seasonality. Okay, that's what happens in a typical year. So farmers tend to plant in the spring and harvest in the fall. That's seasonality, right? But inside of that, there has to do with um, uh, business growth, employment growth, uh, spending and, uh, and consumption, and eventually inflation and the Fed policy that follows it. And then we go into a recession, which could last a, a, a year or two. And then we start the, the business cycle over again. So it could be like, um, oh, let's say uh, 10 years up, three years down, 10 years up, three years down, that kind of stuff. And so I'll look at what the Fed is producing in its economic analysis to understand uh, where we are in the business cycle or, or is the business. So like what we were talking about earlier, and I kind of gave a, a, a two years heads up and I was using the real estate market as an example, which is another cycle. And, we, you know, we knew we were a mature part of that business cycle and that some point somewhere in the near future, there was going to be some sort of pullback in the market. Now, did we know it was going to be COVID? No, but it was going to happen it wouldn't have been like devastating like we are now, but it was likely to happen, right? So right now, um, you know, the Fed is not in reporting, you know, better economic conditions. So we're still on the lower bound of the of the downward cycle, but then we're going to trough out at some point, and maybe next year, I uh, have a bit of recovery, okay, and get back to potential GDP. So what resource to like? understand how GDP and maybe the business cycle are related and inside of that how um, seasonality is related and outside of that how the real estate market also is going through its 13 year cycle and inside of that you got the uh, politics going through a four year cycle are they related yeah yeah they are related but a source for that Besides actually looking at the economic data and interpreting it, uh, I've never used a source for that. So I don't actually know. Okay. Okay, you understand? And so the, the business cycle and the, um, the business cycle and the real estate market, they don't quite overlap. So you get one that kind of does this and another one that kind of does uh, this.
What time frame to start trading on? I'd say look at the four hour and then the one hour. Okay. So for example, let's look at some basics. And I'm sure most of you do this every day, but it doesn't matter. Uh, let's just all go through it. Here's a lower low. Then the next day doesn't create a lower low. I got to thin this out. The third day doesn't create a lower low. The fourth day creates a higher low. The fifth day does not create a lower low. The fifth day creates a higher low. The sixth day creates a higher low. Seventh day creates a higher low. And then a, a blip in the matrix. Okay. Okay. It's just the slight little dip. And that probably had to do with the Fed meeting. Okay. And now we're, uh, so now what I would suggest is we're not likely to get another lower low. Do you think the, um, do you think the neck, this candle here, do you think this candle will close lower than 115.20? How many people think it'll close down here? Yes, I'm self-taught. I've been trading for 20 years. So think about this. Could I go to YouTube videos and watch live streams? There was no YouTube. That's why I have 5,000 videos on YouTube. Because I was one of the first people on it. Could I go to Amazon.com to buy a book? Amazon.com didn't exist. So... Long story short, I taught myself how to trade. I don't know how other people trade. I'm not even really interested. Okay. So we're getting some people know. So therefore, you are a bull. So somewhere you're going to buy a higher low. I've already drawn out a very logical place, and that is here. But I've already done that for you. It's already done. So that would look like, uh, uh. See a maxi plank? Did I print out my charts? All the time. In fact, charts came second in my trading career because they were a new thing when I first started trading. They were a new thing. So when you open a trading account, and one of my first trading accounts was at FXCM, I had to wire whatever amount of money there was because they didn't accept credit cards because you couldn't do that on the internet. This is a while ago. And you didn't get charts. There were no charts. You would open up an account, but there's no charts. So I'd spend $150 a month on charts. So you'd stare at your charts and then you'd go over to your trading platform and you'd click buy or sell, but then you couldn't see where you entered or exited. You couldn't see your entries. You couldn't see your stops. You couldn't see your limits because all you had was your charts. And then you had to look at your trading platform, which was just numbers. And so therefore you'd enter and you'd have to draw. Okay. Right. So you do it this way. Right, you do it this way. Uh, you're like, okay, so I just, uh, I, I, I have an entry here, and then I set up the parent and child order so that if I buy it here, my stop is going to be here, right? And then I have a limit order, and you're like, what was the limit order? And, um, you know, so you'd look at this, you're going, oh, 1650 is where you put your limit. And you had to do all of this separate from your trading account. Weird, right? So what I ended up doing, and this seems radical now, but back then the, the thought process was a lot different. So I would spend an hour and a half every single night crunching volatility data provided by the trading platform, filling out a spreadsheet, creating an index for every single currency pair. I would 
index, every single one. Aussie versus everything. Pound versus everything. Euro versus everything. Dollar versus everything. Yen versus everything. Based on overnight volatility data. Then I would, from indexing them, I knew which ones were relatively strong, relatively moderate, relatively weak. I'd ignore the middle, and I, I would then pair up the strongest versus weakest. And then I would analyze, do a cost basis analysis, essentially, because back then, a pound yen was something like 18 pips. And I might be able to trade the euro yen and get essentially the same trade, but only pay eight pips. So that was a big deal back then, right? So anyway, so then I, I took it through a, a cost basis analysis. And then I'd come down with um, the two or three, actually it was four trades, the four trades I was going to make that day. Based on overnight volatility data and the indices that I created based on that data. Then I would open up my charts and do technical analysis. Now, most of you guys here today open up your charts and look for a trade, <sighs> right? Don't get mad at me. I know you do this. Don't get mad at me. Oh, don't use mocking me. Don't get mad at me. Just listen or be open-minded enough to know that you're probably doing something like that where you're opening up your charts, you're looking for a trade, and you have no idea what you're looking for. You have no idea of why you're just looking for what to do now you don't care what time of day it is you don't care about the fundamentals you don't care about the long-term trend right there's no why there's only what am i going to do now and i might have showed you earlier you might be trading at the wrong time of day you might show up every day at the wrong time and you can't figure out why your results are inconsistent because you're not trading at the right time of day. Okay? Do you understand that? The why is way significantly important than the what. I don't really care how you enter your trades. If you're a bear, you sell lower highs. Other than that, any method you use to identify lower highs, any method you use to identify bearish market conditions, any, any, any method you use to pull the trigger close to resistance you use is absolutely acceptable, acceptable to me. You don't have to use oscillators. I calculate them in my mind in real time, so I don't need to put them on my chart. But if you use MACD, that's cool. I'll teach you how to use MACD properly. If you like an oscillator like stochastics or RSI, I will teach you how to use them properly. But I can calculate a stochastics in my mind. I can calculate a MACD in my mind, but I've been doing it for so long and I understand what the math is doing. But if you want to use those tools, cool. If you want to use CCI instead of Stokes, great. Let's do it. Bring it on. Because at the end of the day, they're all telling you something similar. And when you pull the trigger at resistance in a bearish market, you're going to make money if you're selling. And other than that, do what you need to do, as long as you feel comfortable, right? So, for example, if I was a bear, I would be looking for a short sometime soon. And I'd look at this and say, not now. That's it. I'm done. So, how about this? In four hours from now, what if price was at 115 and I was already a bear? Well, I'd say, cool, that's really neat because I really suspected something like that because I'm a bear and I'm going to see this as resistance. Okay, cool. And now we're down here at this X, but I can't sell low. I'm a bear. So what do bears sell? If they don't sell lows, what do they do? And by the way, Darren, I'm totally cool, cool with that. But you are missing a, just a slight, a leading indicator. Um, I mean, price action is a leading indicator, so I'm cool with naked trading. But if I could teach you how to use pivot points properly, they'll tell you your exit points. They'll, they'll, they'll just add a little bit of helpfulness. 
But if you want to trade naked, by all means, I can totally do it myself, right, as well. So that's, I'm kind of saying with you, Darren, like the indicators are not going to help you. Uh, well, they will help you if you know how to use them. But most people rely on the, on the indicators to tell them what they do. But here's the, the, the truth. The indicators don't tell you what to do. They're just algorithms. They just do calculations and paint lines on a chart. MACD will not pay, uh, pay your kids college tuition. Stochastics will not buy you a Rolex. So you're going to have to know how what the tools do so you can analyze and make decisions, right? So yeah, so lower highs is what everyone is saying. So how about this? Uh, that's way too fat. Hang on. So how about this then? Wait for it. All right. So how about this? Eh, eh. If I was a bear, that's what I would do. Is that going to happen today? No, probably not. Good. I'm done. Have a nice weekend. Yes, uh, not all indicators lag. That's my point, Darren. So let, let's go on Darren's point because it's good. It's all good. Uh, I don't have this template anymore because I deleted everything um, setting up MetaTraders. So let's do this. Let's do... Uh, Let's change this template to something basic. Uh, all right, so let's go, let's go, la, 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 la. what do I want to do? Simple. Mm. Actually, let's go confluence. Okay, let's do this. I have no oscillators already. Let's get rid of the moving averages because they lag. And Darren's like, I hate lag lagging indicators. They're just noise. Gotcha. They're helpful. I mean, they they tell you the average, the moving average is what they tell you. But if you don't like it, you don't like it. And that's cool. OK, and let's just put this instead of candlesticks. Let's put this on a line chart. So I'm I'm cool naked trading, Darren. Uh, I would naked trade this way, though. I like see, for example. For example, delete, 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 delete. OK. For example, when this went up, I knew to exit here. I knew that here, 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 out. It's a leading indicator. So that's cool. I like that. Okay. And then, of course, a double top. And this is actually a bearish pivot. So that tells me the bull, uh, bears are going to take it down. And we have, this is an exit zone as well for a weekly. So the actual weekly plan the, in the course or in my book, it says if this is your top, this, this line here, right? This whole line. If this is your top, this is your exit zone. So once again, it's a leading indicator. It doesn't tell you to sell. It tells you if you're a bear, this green zone is your target for the week. And we knew that Sunday. So all you had to do is down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 exit. Now, on a higher time frame, we're looking at monthlies, and they also say get out here. And you can see there's an overlap. Okay, there's an overlap of weekly and monthly target. So on Wednesday, do you know what I told the whole group? Get out, get out, out, over. Take the rest of the week off, leave, you're done. If you have discipline, you will walk away with pips in your pocket. That's what I said here. Now, how did I know that? How did I have such conviction? I had one leading indicator that was helpful. So I love the price action that a naked chart gives you. I just like to add one more piece of information. Because even though I can calculate the pivots in my mind, I don't think I can calculate the overlaps of weekly and monthly pivot points in my mind all the time and accurately. So um, we knew this on Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. <clears throat> Is there anybody here 
Is there anybody here that can confirm that's exactly precisely what I said back then? That you should be done, be happy with the pips. And then I did training on the law of averages to help you understand why averages, why you should just walk away. So that you understand why, not what. Who cares about that? The why. Why you're better off looking at your trade history over the course of a year. Why it's better just to walk away even if it can go lower. Why you should just walk away anyways with profit in your pocket now. So now, once again, we're predicting the future. Okay. And think about everyone that learned that in the moment, because in the moment, this was down, 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 down. And then suddenly I'm like, get out. Made it a whole point of training. Get out now. And you're like, well, why? It's been falling all week so beautifully. Why would I get out now? Well, it's going to be a learning experience if you listen to me. And it'll be a learning experience if you don't listen to me. So either way, I win. How cool is that? How cool is that? An order block. That's interesting. Yeah. So some guy has a pivot point and calls it an order block. All right. Wonderful. Okay. So anyways, so that, that's all I'm saying, Darren. That's all I'm saying. So I'm saying uh, I would, if I traded naked, I would, I would have that one indicator. And it's just the same indicator twice. That's why I say one, and you're like, well, there's weekly and monthlies. Uh, I just have the same pivot twice. Okay. Now, I also filter this. Okay. So, what did I know the first day? What did I know on Sunday? By the way, my live trading group meets on Sundays. So, when the market opens, boom, you're short. Or boom, you're long, depending on your bias. Okay. Now, check this out. Ready? Wait for it, wait for it, swing trading bearish. So here, this is where we were. Isn't that great? So I filtered it. This case, there's the weekly sell zone. And the point I want to make here is this sell zone. We had this as a sell zone the week before. When, when you were over here. We were already looking at this, okay? So this is printed a week ahead. So you see this area? This is the sell zone for Monday. <laughs> so I said, like, if you log in on a Friday, you're like, hey, hey, fellas, what's going on? Are we going to buy today or are we going to trade or uh, sell today? You are, you're all, you've already lost. So we're already planned this out. We're, it's already planned. We already know what to do. So if you're a front runner, okay, a front runner is going to front run right here. Boom. Okay. Cool, right? And then you're going to probably look at this 1550 price and, and maybe consider that. If you're a bear, so now you already know what to do. And by the way, I explained it to you, so I'm not holding back. I already explained it. Down, up, down. Okay. Great. But my point here is on Friday, Last Friday, this was a sell zone for Monday. So you could take it on a Friday, sell sell Monday's trade on Friday, or uh, when the market opened, you notice a gap down, it retraced back to the moving average, and then you sold here. So by the time either Friday or London opened on Monday, you were done working for the entire week.
right? You see that? How would you like to have that Monday trade already written down on Friday? Right? And then you wait for the breakout, pullback, one, two, three, reversal, London open at the M4, or sorry, the M uh, uh, at the central pivot point. And check this out. You ready? I don't know if you're paying attention. So we're all the way back to Sunday afternoon. What was the target? What was the target? Even Friday afternoon, we were here and we all we already knew the sell zone. All you had to do was be a bear or, or the market opens on Monday. So you're selling here. So back then, either Friday or Monday morning, what was the target you had in mind for the entire week? You ready? It's even labeled bearish profit zone. What? WTF? Are you talking about? Yeah, this line right here. We knew that last week. We knew that on Friday. Four one fourteen fifty one oh three bearish profit zone. Sell here, exit here. Now isn't it helpful to have a leading indicator that tells you that? Just for at least throwing down a, your exit order, your profit order. I mean, it's got to be a little bit helpful, right? Cool. Right on, Darren. Well, I have a macroeconomics degree from Harvard, so maybe that's... I didn't learn much from... <laughs> I already knew all this stuff, but now at least I can claim it. Right. See, see, uh, five or 10 years ago, people would say, Wayne, how, how, you know, how did you learn so much about macroeconomics? And I'm like, well, studied a lot. And people are like, hmm. So at least now I can say, well, I have a macroeconomics degree from Harvard. And they're like, oh, that totally makes sense. Although I don't think I actually learned anything. I learned the history. I learned the history of finance and fell in love with that. So I might be like this 80 year old man that writes about uh, economic and financial history and writes books that no one ever reads. Um, but at least I got the piece of paper on my wall. Right? <laughs> so people are like, how do you know so much about finance? Oh, uh, I don't know. I got that piece of paper though. I got that. And they're like, Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Good. Done. So anyways, we can have, um, you know, like one of the things we talked about in the group, uh, work. So once a week I do uh, group meetings. So I, I take all our members, I break them into subgroups. Uh, last night we had groups that had as many as 10 people in the group. And as a group, they would go through central bank reports and other data that they pulled up from various websites. And they would discuss the fundamentals of like the Aussie dollar, right? So we had 10 people discussing the Aussie dollar led by, you know, um, um, three really strong players and they all discussed right and then we had people living in Australia and and not living in Australia talking about the RBA reading the RBA statement looking at uh, uh, releases and economic reports uh, talking about just like the Aussie the actual Aussies could talk about you know how, how businesses are feeling and what headlines are in the paper and all that kind of stuff and as a group really under talk about simply the fundamentals of the Aussie dollar. But we had a Canadian dollar room, we had a British pound room, we had a Euro room. Um, 
Um, so anyway, it was quite interesting. It was quite a good day. And they speak together as a group. And then we come back together as one long one from the Aussie room discusses technically and fundamentally uh, their ideas for trading. And then someone, a representative from the Euro room and then a representative from the pound room all come out and talk what, you know, let the whole group know what did they discuss, what did they agree with, what they, did they disagree with, what kind of maybe trade potential is there for this. And um, quite a very interesting um, discussion fundamentally. So if that sounds interesting to you, dude, because you, you got the technicals down, but you need more, more fundies, awesome. That might be something that you want to do. Well, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, what's that song? It says, fun, uh, metaphorically, I'm the man, but literally, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I love that line because it's really cool. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. So, anyways. These indicators are available at metatraders.com. No, Rajan, uh, I have a, I have a whole posse of people that back me up. We're a, we're a team and a family, so, um, you know, Anthony knows everything, so he's here to help. There are, there are, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of people in this chat room right now. They hang with me every day. So, they're family. So, that's my brother, Tony. Hey, Tony! Up at Chandra out, huh? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Stephen. That's funny. Yeah, Darren, go slow, man. Go slow. This you're going to do this the rest of your life. You're. I don't know how old you are, but I would look at this as a forty-year career. So. Okay. You might want to consider working for a bank for a few years as well. All right. Um, I'm actually quite exhausted uh, because I'm in the middle of final exams. Uh, metatraders.com. I can't post a link. Metatraders.com. Yeah, I think it's five bucks. But um, here's the interesting thing. A lot of people have trouble installing indicators and such. No criticism there. It's just, I think it's because some files are zipped and some are not zipped. So that's the problem. Whatever, so I've paid a programmer to design an automatic installer. All you have to do is tell it, you know, do you have MT4 or MT5? And then you have to say, well, which MetaTrader um, in installation, like if you have more than one broker, you might have more than one MT4, right? Or more than one MT5. So you just have to say, okay, where's, where, which one, right? So you'll say, oh, it's this path. And the path is easy to get. So I, I think the, the final design is going to be like this. We're going to have to give you a training video and say, okay, click file, go to, um, 
what did I do? Oh, open, go to open data folder. So a window will open. And then copy this URL. Okay. And the installer will ask for that URL. You'll enter it, hit next, and it'll install 250 files, and you're done. And that's, that's most likely going to happen Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. So even if you pay the five bucks now and you can't figure it out, don't worry. Early next week, I'm going to send it out to everyone. And by the way, I'm including a new bonus for all of those customers, all those traders that have ever signed up, even even if they signed up a year ago, I'm going to send you a big bonus and the new installers and MT5 everything that's been converted and all this love I'm going to share, even though you've already paid the money. Okay. Cool. So, um, moderator, is it okay if I pull the plug now? I know it's an hour early, but I'm slammed, right? I'm slammed with with schoolwork. It, my la all papers are due, and my last final examination is on Monday, so I'm in like not sleeping mode. So I'm already running out of energy. So moderator, if you're listening, is that okay to end it a little bit early? And guys, if you're interested in learning more, tradersway.com. If you open a demo account, you can come to my live uh, webinars every single day, totally for free. The demo is free. The webinars are free. Just become a client of Traders Way, okay? Tradersway.com. If you want to take the video courses while it's still 80% off, fxbootcamp.com. Okay? Oh, I know what I can do. Some of this might be helpful. Hang on. A lot of people have asked questions. Hang on. Uh, where did that go? Oh, I see why. Uh, no. I have so many. Problem is I have so many um, PowerPoints open because I was going through lectures. All right. Hang on. You guys have asked a ton of times. There you go. Metatraders.com, fxbootcamp.com, tradersway.com. So I'm going to call it quits here, guys. I got to, I got to maybe take a nap and then get back to my schoolwork. Tired, man. Tired. So thank you for being here. Thank you to FX Street. Thank you for your loyalty and respect. Okay, I'll look at it, David. Yeah, email me. I might be a little slow between now and Monday, but I'll get you taken care of eventually, okay? I'll try to do it today, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going nuts, so I'm going crazy. But... I'll do my best, okay? I think what you probably did was you probably bought the course but you didn't set up you didn't set up the account. Yeah, feel free to email me everybody. You know, moderator, you might just leave the webinar running and let people chat and hang out with themselves. Just a thought, but you probably want to move on with your weekend as well. Um, but uh, cool. By the way, you know what this picture is? So I'm I'm at the Chinese uh, the China Forex Expo, and I'm supposed to be on this panel where there was a whole bunch of brokers trying to bust into the Chinese market, right? They were supposed to be on a panel discussion. And they asked me to be on the panel discussion to, to talk about binary options. 
But I said, well, you know, Trader's Way doesn't offer binary options anymore, but I'm happy to participate, sure. So I get to the stage. There, the room is filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of attendees. And it's supposed to start in three minutes. And the producer of the show shows up literally in panic, speaks to me in broken English. The other guys aren't showing up. I'm like, oh my God, seriously? They're like, we don't know what's going on, but they're not showing up. Of course, what happened was it was near the end of the conference. They all took out their new clients for a big party somewhere and just like ditched the show. So there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in the audience. I'm there to talk about binary, binary options, which I don't even represent, right? Traders Way doesn't even, at that time, doesn't, didn't have them. So I said, I'll tell you what. This is like Hollywood. The show always goes on. The show must go on. I said, I'll do this. I got my good friend here, Daniel. He speaks Chinese. I said, we can go out there. It's like an hour and a half meeting. I said, we can go out there and you can stand in the audience. I'm talking to the producer now. You can stand in the audience with a microphone and you can go around and anybody can ask me any question they want about finance or trading in any market, about any asset class, using any methodology they want. And my good friend here, and he's sitting right next to me. Uh, he's cut out because, you know, it would be confusing. But anyways, he's sitting right next to me with a microphone. And they would just ask, ask me questions for an hour and a half. And I would answer. It would get translated. Next question. 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 And then we're like, <laughs> we wrapped it all up. It was a good end. And I saved the show. <laughs> and they gave me an award for best educator. Woo! So I look at that and I'm like, that's a funny day. And I wish I'd pulled my sock up a little bit. But um, but anyways, right? That's how you roll, baby. If I'm going to be, uh, where was this? Shenzhen? Yeah. If I'm going to go all the way to Shenzhen, oh, baby, the show must go on. So anyways, I look at that and I smile. What a great day. Plus, I look like I'm 90 years old. Cool. So anyways, uh, thank you, moderator. Well, oh yeah, so FX Street this says the chat will automatically close. What I'm saying is I don't have to end streaming. You can close it whenever you want, I believe, right? I, I could just mute my mic. I'm going to, I need to leave anyway, so I could just mute my mic and leave it chatting. Because there's lots of people that might have questions. I, I know there's dozens of people here that are very good at trading Forex that can, you can share what I would say. And I know they know what I would say. So anyways, your, your call. So uh, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, Epic Street. Thank you, you. Thank you, you. And uh, it's a privilege to be here with you. Uh, hope to see you uh, again soon. If you're in my, if you join my live trading group, we meet Sunday night at 5 p.m. Uh, for day trading. Cool. I'll just mute my mic. Moderator, you can kill it whenever you want.